Welcome to the Green Power F24 kit car gearing video. This is about sprockets and chains. What you'll notice hopefully on the left here is a smaller sprocket. It has 12 teeth and it's connected to the motor axle which means that it's directly connected to the electric motor. On the right we have the rear wheel axle and this has 72 teeth in this illustration. That means that for every single rotation of the 12 teeth sprocket on the motor axle it will move the rear wheel axle 12 teeth. That means that the motor axle will need to spin round or rotate six times for the 72 teeth rear axle to rotate once and that's because 72 divided by 12 is equal to 6. What we have here is a spreadsheet I've made in numbers. What you see over here on the left is the motor speed revolutions per minute. Now the electric motor feeder to a green power car um, when engaged with a full power and simple on off switch will probably without load spin maybe up to 2300 rpm but it's most efficient when it's spinning at around 2000 rpm. We know that the motor sprocket has 12 teeth and we know that the rear axle sprocket has 72 teeth and we know that 72 divided by 12 equals 6. That means that when, if the engine spins at 2000 rpm the wheel will spin at one sixth of that which is 333 revolutions per minute. If we measure the wheel and it is 19 inches including the tyre in terms of diameter we know because pi d is equal, the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter that in fact that the circumference of the wheel is 1.516 meters and therefore simple mathematics can deduct or calculate that the overall speed at 2000 rpm with these two sprockets fitted to the car will propel the car at 30 kilometers per hour or just shy of 19 miles per hour. If we were to change the motor sprocket um, up to a 16 tooth then the ratio between the motor sprocket and the rear axle would change and in fact instead of being 6 to 1 it's now 4.5 to 1 because 72 divided by 16 is equal to 4.5. This increases the wheel RPM and therefore the car goes faster. So the last part of this video is to look at the motor efficiency, that's the efficiency of the electric motor. Uh, this chart is kindly provided by WeChuk uh, Racing, that's W-E-C-H-O-O-K dot com. Um, Matt and Ian uh, post a lot online and if you want to know more then I strongly recommend that you go and check them out. So what they've done here is they've used four different engines, some are new and some are older and have been around the track a few times and uh, perhaps more worn in but there's going to be some variation in performance between any two different engines. I mean, they're the same specification engine, but um, there are going to be manufacturing tolerance differences. And uh, it also goes to show, I think, that uh, older engines might have a slightly different sort of performance efficiency than new ones. So in the bottom here, we have the motor RPM. And up here we have the system efficiency and I think it's pretty obvious that the engine is performing the most efficiently at around sort of 2000 RPM. Now when the motor or the sprocket connected to the motor is not connected to the rest of the car there is no load placed on the engine and the RPM therefore might go higher with very little load but as we connect it to the car and it therefore has to pull along the driver and the weight of the vehicle and overcome aerodynamic drag and rolling resistance. What we'll see is that that load will pull back the motor RPM. So the most important thing here is to make sure that the load we're placing uh, 
does not pull the RPM too far down. Uh, this will, the result of that is going to be based on what gearing ratio, the number of sprockets fitted to the motor axle and the drive axle. Um, if we have the car geared very highly, uh, which would give us a, a, a really big maximum speed, well the motor will, may not be able to pull that load and so actually would go slower anyway um, by reducing the RPM. The, the major issue here is to do with the fact that the car is not really ever running totally flat. There are no racetracks where the circuit is like a billiard table. Um, there are points in the circuit where you're going to be going uphill and that will increase the load on the motor. Um, and when you're going downhill, it will reduce the load on the motor. So selecting the right gearing ratio relative to the track is the way to get optimum performance from the engine.